Hello and a very warm welcome, my dear friends, to the impressive and brand new Maxus eDeliver 7. It has just recently arrived here in Germany, ready to make its mark. You can now finally purchase it, friends, and it has some truly amazing specs that will undoubtedly revolutionize the entire market for the all-electric van segment. Before we get started, please check if you're part of the Simple Electric community. If not, please support us with a subscription. And here we go with the review and the driving report of the Maxus eDeliver 7. And as always, we start from the outside, start from the front, and take a look at the brand new front section, the new face from Maxus. Maxus belongs to Psych Motor, and Psych Motor is the third largest car manufacturer in the world after Toyota and Volkswagen, and offers here with Maxus solely electric commercial vehicles. And this is where Maxus has really shown its strengths very, very nicely with the closed cooler grille. It will also be available as a combustion engine by the end of the year, that's all I'm saying. But here we have the purely electric variant, elegant with a seven LED headlights, including LED daytime running lights, which are standard. We also have an up and down leveling function, and that's not common in the commercial vehicle class. There, we often still have the halogen headlights. Yes, if we look to the side, we're looking at a majestic size. It will be available in two different lengths, L1 with a length of five meters and 5.9 cubic meters of cargo volume. More on that later, and it will be available in L2, just like we have it, then with 5.36 meters in length. And that is certainly a wonderful story. Optionally, there will also be a high roof later where the load volume will increase significantly from 6.9 cubic meters to over eight cubic meters, providing much more space. And I think that's a great story because here too, and that's not a given, there's a really great trailer load will be available. More on that later. Yes, nice design, I think from the outside, looks European, could theoretically also be a Volkswagen. Um, T7 or maybe even a Ford, um, what's it called? Tournament, I believe, or Tunio. So finally from Maxus, an outward presentation that looks distinctly European, that looks exceptionally elegant, where even the craftsmen feel a deep sense of pride and dedication to their work, represents because when we think of the previous Maxus derivatives, then it might all look a bit outdated. No offense meant, but it definitely should be said for fairness. Yes, we are with Maxus Northern Germany. I'll also include the link to the website, which will direct you to where you can easily find all the detailed information about the new eDeliver 7. We have a nice sliding door here, always standard on the passenger side. Currently, it's so that there's always this extendable um, additional step being included. I sincerely hope it remains that way because it's really great if you want to load something into the Maxus and take advantage of its spacious design. And also, if we take a look in here, everything is nicely covered with a high quality, durable rubber flooring. The sides are neatly clad, unfortunately, not the wheel wells. I would have wished for that. There's enough time to say we have a nice back wall here, also with a tinted glass where you can look back if everything in the cargo hold is properly secured and tight. So that is super awesome. And optionally, you also have the option to get a second sliding door, should you prefer that, where you can also exit from the driver's side. So I have to say the Maxus actually offers a lot of great features there. There are only two additional options, Stefan. Well, what is it? Once the silver metallic, which we have here for an extra charge, okay? And then the second sliding door, everything else is included in the price with Maxus. Yeah, that's awesome. Saves you from endless configuring. When we talk about the price, this L2 variant comes in. There are two battery sizes, one 77 kilowatt hours and another 88 kilowatt hours. The L2 88 kilowatts, as it is right here, is roughly around 48,900 euros net in its base configuration. But Maxus Northern Germany is working on a leasing offer where you might even be able to lease it for under 300 euros net per month. That would be a craftsman offer, I believe where no one would have an argument against driving electric, right? I think so too, yeah. Check out Maxus Norddeutschland. The link is in the video description. And as always, let's take a thorough and detailed look under the front hood together. What I kind of miss here are range hoods. I find that a bit unfortunate. But we actually see relatively little here, except for a bit of brake fluid. You can refill the windshield washer fluid here, and unfortunately we don't have a frunk. 
I would have found a frunk interesting to maybe store the type 2 charging cable up front. What I'm missing are hood struts. They could have added that. Everything is insulated because here underneath is the front motor. This means the front axle is driven with 150 kilowatt, 204 horsepower and boasts a 330 nanometer torque. It's limited to 120 km h, which I actually find quite good in the commercial vehicle segment. So not all the vans, box trucks, sprinters are speeding down the highway in strong crosswinds, full throttle Stefan, right? Yeah, it can be quite dangerous sometimes what we observe there at times. Uh, otherwise, we're generally against speed limits because we still have unrestricted driving on highways in Germany where it's not limited, right? Yes. What's also really cool is that Maxis says front wheel drive actually isn't the only option. That means in the fall winter around the IAA, it will also be available with all wheel drive. This is obviously interesting for all those who perhaps have their workplace in the mountains, who may also sometimes have to navigate rough terrain on construction sites. And especially when it is loaded, which we will get to later, what it can tow and how you can load it, then an all wheel drive, I think, might even be worth its weight in gold or Yes, so you can look forward to Maxis thinking of you and offering all-wheel drive. And that's in the commercial vehicle sector, I believe, especially the e-sector. I didn't read it. Me neither. Let's hear what Chinese steel sounds like, shall we? Three, two, one. Sauger. Let's discuss the proportions once more. In the L1 variant, so to speak, with a shorter wheelbase, we consequently have a length of exactly five meters. So you get the option with 77 kilowatt hours. Besides that, there's also the long wheelbase L2, which gives you 5.36 meters in length. And where you can also optionally get the 88 kilowatt hour battery and later, of course, the all wheel drive. But it first starts here in Germany with the L2 and the large battery variant. The other vehicles are basically on the way to Europe. Yes. Regarding the proportions, it's 2 meters wide, 1.99 meters high. I am a delicate 1.85 meters tall, and you can charge the battery with two connectors here for Europe, on one hand, through the Type 2 connector, where you can charge AC3 Phase 11 kilobalov. That was once an issue with Maxis, that not all vehicles can handle 3 Phase 11 kilobalov. And DC with up to 90 kilobalov peak, that might be the only drawback, because we are, of course, a bit spoiled by passenger cars, getting more spoiled all the time. Here, Maxis, I think, generously offers 20 to 80% Stefan with 43 minutes. Of course, we would naturally wish for it to charge like a car, 1080 now, in under 30 minutes, because it's important for tradespeople too, who drive longer distances, to quickly charge at a CCS during their lunch break and get the battery back to range quickly. In a typical van, alongside Sliding side doors, of course, large wing doors are also very important, which ideally you can easily can fold down. How do you do that, Stefan? Ah. So you can bring the pallets here with the forklift, by the way. One pallet fits sideways through the side door. That means you can fit two Euro pallets in here with ease, as we have a payload of up to 1.1 tons on the rear axle, ensuring secure, efficient transport of heavy goods. That's already a great story, right? That's neat. Exactly, and for those who need more, you have the option to lock the door again here. Manually, logically, because electrically, there are unfortunately no wing doors yet. And then you can basically attach the trailer hitch here where you can tow 750 kilos with brakes and 1.5 tons without brakes. And that's something, isn't it? That's neat. So if you then imagine that you can pull another 1.5 tons of brake trailer load behind it, then the Samnesa Maxus E-Deliver 7 becomes a real transport weapon, right? Absolutely. Like a multi-tool. And I feel like he's pushing a bit beyond the competitor's capabilities. Well, it offers just a little bit more of everything and we'll especially see that inside. Outside, we've shown you everything, so let's take a look inside. First, let's check if we have single or double glazing, 
We have single glazing as you'd expect for a transporter, although two panes with a film between them would be another highlight. Great. You might not expect that in the commercial vehicle segment either. It's about various different things, and I have to say I'm so utterly and completely positively surprised by this. Not that you think somehow I'm a new Maxxis fan, I just think Maxxis is cool because they understand vehicle construction and because they don't just come over from Asia and throw something together for us. It's like saying, yeah, give it a try. We have a new offer for you, but there's expertise behind it. It's backed by the third largest automaker in the world. And also a network. You have a full five-year warranty up to 100,000 kilometers, an eight-year warranty on the battery, and 12 years against rust. So you'll get a complete package here. You have a nationwide dealer network, especially here in Northern Germany, very, very extensive with Maxxis Northern Germany. And transitioning here to the trim, I think, for the commercial vehicle segment, you have for the first time such a premium ambiance. That means we have plastic here, but with a nice texture. It's not padded, but it doesn't have to be. However, everything here where the elbow rests and where the door handle is, is padded. Here's also a rubber mat inside the door handle. So if you put a few coins in there for parking meters, nothing rattles, electric windows, central locking, all well made. Here's some plastic, a little painted to make it look a bit more high quality, like a chrome-like handle. I think that's done elegantly as well. Here's something for inclusion on the packing list. Put it down immediately below and leave space for another compartment elsewhere. A large two liter water bottle fits in here or for a handyman, a nice half liter, right? Nah, I would first unlearn that. Exactly, that's why there's a cup holder here for the trip home, ensuring you have a place for your drink. We have the electronic brake, the auto hold function, the mode button. So you've got eco, comfort and sport modes for the drive. And you've got three levels of seat heating all in one user interface. Isn't it just sensational? Amazing. <laughs> Electric windows and SOS buttons so you can call for help in an emergency. And the absolute highlight is not only do you have seat heating, but also steering wheel heating. I have to say things are moving forward at Maxxis now, right? Oh, really, but nice with oh, it in winter. Holy moly. Stefan is in the back in the storage room filming through the sidewall window. And so I can easily show you the complete width here, the two meters of the interior and the cockpit space. And I am really positively surprised. Stefan, come up here. We want to show our viewers the details, how much attention to detail Maxis has put into creating the e-deliver. Seven, before we get started, just a note, the way Maxis creates the dashboard in this commercial vehicle, I wish I could see that in some combustion engine cars, Stefan. Uh, Absolutely, because that is really on car level. What we certainly lack is a head-up display here. There might be some room here. Maybe they'll add it later in a model update. Let's wait and see. Otherwise, we have a nice analog area here where we can see the power of the motor and whether it is regenerating. We have the analog tachymeter. And here in the center, we also have an information display where we can generate various functions accordingly. We've got a really nice faux leather steering wheel here, which feels amazing to the touch. Really very, very classy. With tactile buttons that are easy to operate, ergonomically well-placed. And we have on board an array of advanced assistance systems, including adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, emergency braking assist, and more to enhance driver safety and comfort. Blind spot warning, so basically all the features we know from cars today are on board, including a heated steering wheel, including heated seats. I have to give a big fat compliment here. And in this class, Maxxis is really setting a totally new standard, right? Right, they truly do it well indeed. If everything works out, great. Because of course our German manufacturers like Mercedes can also do this in the Vito or um, in the Tourer. Sure, Volkswagen can certainly do that too. Then ID box, ID bus. But of course, there's a terribly long list of optional extras behind it. And that's where I think Maxxis has an advantage starting at 48,090 euros net and hopefully with interesting leasing conditions. A touch competitive edge, right? I find that really nice too. And right when we come to the infotainment here, we have a very, very nice large display where you then have various options up to the 360 degree camera. You always have the home button. We'll come back to that later when parking. And now here you have the choice again, and you have access to all the vehicle settings available. And I'll show you here again with the intelligent drive that basically you have front radar parking assistance here. 
You've got vehicle monitoring here, speed limit reminders, not to drive too fast, the blind spot assistant, the lane keeping assistant, collision assistance, that you don't carelessly hit someone somewhere and various other options that are meant to sweeten your life here. Yes, of course, you also have the option to connect your media player here via Bluetooth and USB music in addition to the radio. An absolute highlight, I think, is Apple CarPlay, and as far as I know, also Android Auto, then connected via USB-C cable across the entire display. And that is just mega brilliant that you can mirror your phone even in a commercial vehicle, right? Absolutely, especially for people driving through Hamburg, for example, looking for an address. I don't know any full addresses here in this particular location. What's also great is that we have automatic climate control here. That means we can very, very nicely control the climate via the touch display, including driver passenger temperature, automatic recirculation, air conditioning, and so on, thus providing maximum comfort and convenience. And, but you also have quick access buttons if you want to quickly change the temperature while driving. So Maxis really steps on it, I think, yeah, for the smoking cigarettes recently. Yippee, I'd say let's just take this out here. Then you've got a nice big storage compartment because smoking isn't healthy anyway. I also quit smoking and I feel much better afterwards, Stefan. That's nice, yes. But let's get into the details here. We've got a hard plastic, but it's nicely textured and at least feels soft to the touch. We've got here faux leather, beautifully and finely stitched manual air vents. Faux leather with stitching again. Sure, we've got piano lacquer here, scratches easily. That always seems to look a little bit greasy, but at the very least, we do have it. We have a nice large glove compartment here. What might be missing is a little felt. But even that in the commercial vehicle segment can then uh, sometimes be overlooked. And otherwise, we basically have another rear view mirror here, which actually has no function because it reflects in the partition plate. And what we're clearly and obviously missing here is like a little makeup mirror, right? Yeah, it would be nice if you could freshen up a bit after a tough day on the construction site. Yes, just apply the eyeliner, or like a bricklayer, no, just kidding. Sure, a cosmetic mirror might not be the be all and end all, but you can definitely bring the nice mirror over for yourself and just check if your hairstyle is in place. Last but not least, another look through the passenger door here into the interior. And I believe that Maxis has once again used very high quality materials here. We have a very, very beautiful fabric cover with some white dots. This is all finely crafted. Sure, we might expect a bit more lumbar support here, but everything is nicely cushioned, firmly padded. You sit here comfortably. The suspension is decently firm, yet comfortable. So this is all European standard. We have the handle for getting in and out on the passenger side. And once again, we have a rubber floor here that also has a certain softness to it, is nicely slip resistant and is easy to clean and maintain. I believe to keep things clean and such a double bench so you can travel with three people here is okay, right? Yes, that's okay. Because it has the necessary width and the bicycle is of course a bit more comfortable here with the middle armrest. Outside, we showed you everything. Inside, we showed you everything. Please hurry up and get in because we definitely want to get to the driving report as soon as possible and see how the Maxxis E-Deliver drives on the road. We started with the Maxxis E-Deliver 7 and I think you hardly notice that you're sitting in such a commercial vehicle. Nah, well, he doesn't swing as much as I thought he would. You sit so high up like in an SUV, you have the complete overview as if you're sitting on a throne. Yeah, yeah, sure, just check out the overview, that's awesome. And what Max has also managed to achieve is that these 150 kilo of 204 horsepower with the 330 newton meter torque. Nice spontaneous response on the throttle, so I can press the accelerator and something happens, yes? That's nice, 330 newton meters, that'll do. Sure, that will change when the car is fully loaded and that's when all wheel drive might become interesting, especially if you're frequently transporting heavy loads or even pulling something. Yes, what Maxis has on board, you just heard it briefly, is also a traffic sign recognition system, which surprisingly works quite well, right? Yeah, and kind of annoying too when you're like 2 mph over. Well, I have truly always been a big fan of strictly sticking to the posted speed limits. Absolutely. So it's also become a bad habit that somehow everyone, it seems even in a city where there are kindergartens and schools like here in Hamburg, there are also many cyclists on the dike. Just driving 20, 30 too fast in town, I don't think that's very cool, right? No, but the officials are keeping a close eye on that matter. 
extremely good. We have activated the adaptive cruise control for you and it still works perfectly at 30 km h2. I think it's really great that it's like this. You see he's now reducing the speed because we're approaching an obstacle. I'm driving it now and once we're out of the radar, a bit jerky, he sees it, notices it and then accelerates back to the set 30 km h. I know that some of you uh, put a lot of value on this because I think it wasn't like that with the Opel Corsa. He somehow couldn't drive 30 km h with the adaptive cruise yeah. control. Unnötig. From 40, yes, exactly. And that's obviously important for such a commercial vehicle because you often drive in city traffic where it can frequently be 30. And what's also brilliant, he has the congestion feature, Stefan. Oh, very good. That means you can basically let it assist you semi-autonomously through traffic jams comfortably. So this is also a brilliant feature. <laughs> especially for all craftsmen who drive a lot in city traffic with stop and go, traffic lights and so on, that's a great thing. What strikes us in the first few meters, Stefan? What does your gut tell you? I'm here sitting comfortably. Me too, so surprisingly comfortable tuned. Sure, it has a certain firmness, meaning it doesn't sway like some utility vehicles, like one of those rocking ones that go back and forth. It's nicely European firm. Now all the alarm signals are going off here, which is good because it shows that the assistance systems are working. And I think that's brilliant because we've driven quite a few commercial vehicles and somehow we felt like we were on a high sea steamer without ballast. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Isn't it already Pentecost here? Yes. Even the hardworking school children also have vacations sometimes. Yes, I wanted to show here at the Kirchwerder District School how well the rear view camera works on the Maxxis E-Deliver 7. That is, by the way, standard here on board. So that's also included in the purchase price, so to speak. I say that's simply genius, right? That's great, especially the options you have now. Exactly. Even when we shift into drive now, we also have a front camera with guiding lines. We have very nice side cameras here where we can also see beside the box what happens there accordingly. And when we start, we get a top-down perspective view again. I honestly and truly strongly believe this. Or is that only at the traffic light we had that earlier? Right, we somehow had it at the traffic light that it then switches to a top view mode. So here you can also see very, very nicely your surroundings, including the blind spot. Well, I think Maxxis really went out on a limb with this commercial vehicle, didn't they? Yeah, mostly really good. And especially the car is like 530 meters long. Treat the car, of course, with the necessary respect. 5.36 meters of step. Yeah, yeah. We need to be precise since we have some viewers who diligently verify our measurements and correct them if necessary, ensuring absolute accuracy in every single detail. We want to measure the interior noise with you at 50 km h. Sixty-two, sixty-three, sixty-four decibels. That's a decent value for comparison. A soundproofed ID3 of the newer generation has 60, 61 decibels. We're accelerating to 70 km h. Sixty-nine, seventy decibels. That's a good value. That's comparable to the ID3. Let's accelerate swiftly to 100 km h. Seventy-three decibels, that's a top value. And ID3 is around mid-70 decibels. I have to say that's truly and incredibly well insulated and not typical for a utility vehicle, wouldn't you say, Stefan? Yes, especially since he's a bit taller in the wind at nearly two meters tall. Yes, that's fine. What we have to say in all fairness is that we always have slight wind noises here over the large side mirror. Over the A-pillar, we've noticed that with other Maxxis derivatives as well. We will also show you sir, in a second video later on all about the E-Deliver 3 as well as the E-Deliver 9. Those are indeed two very nice Maxxis derivatives. If you're basically looking for a panel van, one size smaller or maybe one size larger. It's really important that we also test the 0-100 acceleration. Stefan, step on it, count. Three, two, one, go. And right now, he certainly needs a moment to pause and reflect for a bit. Now he's up, 40, 60, 80, and the 150 kilo to precisely regulate, and 100. Relaxed 11.16 kilometer each. That's for a large van with that significant frontal area. Today, it's also slightly windy here in Hamburg. Really top value, right? Yeah, that's fine. Good enough. Can you get moving quickly when the light changes? 
I even sent a power mode because the guys from yeah. Maxxis North Germany selflessly said, hey, Ollie, why don't you give our Maxxis utility vehicle a try for a launch? Because you'll see he gets going well. And I have to say, I'm immensely and really quite impressed with his progress. And even on rough, challenging terrain, the road here is a bit bumpy and uneven. Do it properly, but still keep it snug and comfortable. Right. Yeah, it's comfortable. You don't slide around or anything. It's okay. Sounds not bad, right? Yeah. Uh, I just picked one of our favorite songs on Epic CarPlay. Nice for cruising. Sure, we only have speakers at the front now, but we don't have any support behind us, which makes the overall coverage less effective. But I guess you can't expect that in a commercial vehicle anymore. And for that, it's enough. And for some handyman posing, I think that's doable. Absolutely right. Keep elbows out. I switched to sport mode again to accelerate quickly out of here at 60, 80, and it goes to 100, and it easily goes to 120. That means in the eDeliver 7, you certainly also have more than enough power to meet your needs. 120 is the speed limit, but if you briefly accelerate, it can naturally reach 130 on the speedometer too. Yes, we want to show you the adaptive cruise control here. You can set it up to 120 km h naturally for added convenience. And then he consistently sticks very strictly to his designated lane here, rather decently, I would think, but he doesn't have a um, steering assistant, which means what we know from premium cars, that you're basically kept in the center of the lane. He didn't. So you guys have to keep the middle of the lane yourselves. Such distance control speed is worth gold, right? That's definitely worth gold. Let's get to the conclusion with the Maxxis eDeliver 7, the latest derivative from the house of Maxxis, which has finally arrived here in Germany or made its way to us here in Germany. And I have to tell you, I'm really impressed because in my eyes, it kind of revolutionizes this commercial vehicle segment. Of course, we're not able to show you every commercial vehicle. We always show you highlights where we think we're showing you something special because you hear especially in the interior, particularly in the passenger compartment, then you really get a lot of support in the semi-autonomous area. You also have a nice hospitality here and, of course, a transport volume plus payload plus towing capacity where we are slowly but surely heading in the right direction so that it will also become usable and meaningful for many of you craftsmen. And I'd say just 88 kilowatt hours of battery. That's quite a statement, I think, in terms of size. Paired with 150 kilowatt, 204 horsepower, the option to get it as an all-wheel drive by the end of the year, plus the towing capacity and the price under 50 kilowatt net. If a great leasing offer comes along, which Maxxis North Germany is planning, then there are really hardly any arguments left not to take a look at an eDeliver 7 and get involved with it, right? Absolutely. You should definitely consider looking into it. And for all the people who always say, oh, sorry, but unfortunately it still doesn't fit our craft yet, I can also say that by the end of the year, the diesel engine will eventually and successfully make its way into the eDeliver 7, an impressive achievement. So it's actually called Deliver 7 without the E, and then you can get this great van as a diesel. Feel free to write in the comments if you would like to see a review on that, because Maxxis is still more of a niche brand in the commercial vehicle segment at the moment, and more like a secret tip, and that's why we consciously chose Maxxis to better show you so you can fully understand to introduce the secret, uh, now not so secret, amazing things, Stefan, right? Yes, we're always in the service of the community, highlighting the unique and often overlooked niches. Day and night, we're back at Maxis North Germany. The link is in the video description, and unfortunately, we have to part ways with the Maxis eDeliver 7. Stefan, what's better than a Maxis eDeliver? Two. That's why we parked nicely next to the other silver car again, and of course, we hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a big thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment below on whether you'd like to see more commercial vehicles featured on this channel in the future. And please check again if you're part of the Einfahr Elektrisch community. If not, we'd be happy if you subscribe to us. Thank you for watching. Stay healthy and see you soon. You're Ollie. You, Stefan, you have to say, don't you think I find the front truly awesome? Like really awesome, right? I like that too. It kind of has a bit of structure. I first wondered why these slits are here, but then when the combustion engine comes, it needs a bit more airflow. Yeah, so the thing gets moved back and then eventually you get some airflow. Great idea overall.